Hi guys, Pastor John Mel here. I pray that this sermon will encourage you and deepen your faith. Kung nabless po kayo sa message nito, please like and share and tag someone and let's spread the word about the goodness and love of our God. Mabuhay po. Hallelujah. I was excited to hear the message of the Lord this morning. Pwede bang sabihin mo sa katabi mo, excited ako na makinig ng salita ng Panginoon, you know? Every day, napakabuti ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. At uh, tayong lahat ay nakakaranas ng hindi lang ng pagpapala, but of course, the abundance of life, amen? The spiritual blessing, salvation, and forgiveness. That's the best thing that God could give us, you know, the forgiveness and also the salvation. That's why, why, why don't we clap our hands to God once again? Uh, really? He is good, Amen. Can you just tell to the person seated next to you, Mabuti ang Panginoon, araw-araw. Mabuti ang Panginoon, araw-araw. Hallelujah. We are now on our third week of our series uh, called The Manager. And I hope uh, tayong lahat po ay natututo. Amen. Uh, sa atin ditong lahat, for sure, ay uh, marami tayong natutunan lately. At hindi lang po yun, tayo po ay napipigilan sa mga dapat namin tigilan, di ba? Kasi for sure, uh, nakuha na natin yung bonus natin, Ate Carla, for sure. Pwede na tayong bumili ng pampariband, di ba? Or whatever. But for sure, ang Panginoon, He keeps on reminding us that, uh, hey, we have to have that self-control sa buhay natin. That's why this series, you know, ang daming mga sale ngayon. Actually, last time nagbabrowse kami ni, ni Doc Josh, pero siya yata ay bira lang. So, uh, 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 marami ang... Uh, marami tayong natutunan from this series and I believe marami pa tayong matututunan. Amen. That's why, can I invite you to please all rise as we read the message of the Lord this uh, this, af- this afternoon. I want you to open your Bible in Proverbs chapter 6 verses 6 through 8 and then we're going to pray. Amen. It says here, Go to the end, O sluggard. <laughs> Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? Can you bow your heads and let's pray, God, we thank you for your word. We believe, God na kami po ay binigyan niyo po ng lakas para hindi po maging tamad, kundi para maging masipag. Lord, we will never, uh, Lord, we will never, uh, uh, Lord, we will never uh, accept the fact na kami po ngayon ay nasa poverty line because we believe you gave us the ability to gain wealth. Amen. Dahil you gave us the power of Lord, the, 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 the passion to do whatever, kung anuman po ang ginagawa namin sa buhay ngayon. Lord, we believe na kami po ay matututo papano mag-invest, papano mag-ipon. Because we believe, Lord, uh, the, the spirit of being a Christian, Lord, it's not just about, Lord, it's not just about asking, but Lord, doing the things what we heard from you. Kaya kami, Panginoon, ay pagpapalain ninyo. We follow your ways. We follow your statutes. We follow your testimonies, God. Kaya po kami ngayon, we're claiming and we're holding those promises na ibinigay niyo po sa amin. Those promises, we believe, have premises, Panginoon. That's why right now, kami po ay matututo. Even though this is weird, kami po ay matututo sa langgam. Kapi po kami, Panginoon, naniniwala kami na we're more than langgam because you gave us brains, you gave us power and will. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may now be seated. Yo, uh, when I, while I was reading and preparing for this message, Lord, what, what would be the great, or what would be the best introduction for this message? Kasi, Lord, we're talking about investment, of course. Sa buhay po natin, we're not just talking, of course, nasa church context tayo. Hindi lang po tayo nag- nakikipag-usap dito sa eternal, you know, eternal investment. Kasi, sa bilang Kristiyano, automatic yun na talagang dapat maganda mag-invest mo tayo sa spiritual things or sa mga eternal things. Amen? Uh, when you're giving your tithes and offerings, yun po ang tinatawag natin, we're investing sa 
spiritual or we're investing sa eternal things. And we believe, gagamitin po ng Panginoon yon for, uh, for, for, for the good. But while I was preparing for this message, as we, as we uh, disclose this message week through our ma- the manager, Lord, sabi ko, ano kayong magandang verse for this message? And God gave me this verse in, in Proverbs 6, 6, 8. Go to the end. Use longer. So, nung pagkabasa ko nito, sabi ko, Lord, grabe naman, we, were, we are compared to, uh, to, to ants. Diba? Parang iniisip na, Lord, masipag ba ang ants? You, you know the characteristics of, of uh, an ant or ants. I have here four characteristics of ants. Number one is, they have initiative. Kaya sila, ang ginagawa nila tuwing summer, habang hindi nagbabaha, kasi alam naman natin, tuwing, tuwing rainy season, nagbabaha. May mga tendency. But their characteristics, their tendency is to, to gather their food and store food para pag nagbaha, meron silang uhugutin at meron silang kakainin. So one of their characteristics is they have initiative and foresight because they know hindi laging malakas sila. Hindi laging good ang weather. Hindi laging okay tayo sa boss natin or we will be promoted. The, uh, they have the foresight and initiative. I have to store something because I believe hindi sa lahat ng panahon ay okay kami. Second one is industriousness. So, they are industrious. Ibig sabihin ng industriousness, masipag. So, yung, minsan kasi parang tayo, we have the ability, God gave us the ability, the knowledge, the wisdom, the power, the passion, we have the Holy Spirit, but despite all the blessings we receive from the Lord, still, we, we, we are sitting on a couch, we are lying on the bed, the reason, na parang sinasabi, hey, Lord, bakit di mo ko bless? Hey, God gave you everything. But the question is, do we use the ability God gave us so that we will gain wealth or maybe knowledge? So they're industrious and diligent. And also, yung po pagiging independent nila at saka yung self-motivated sila. Di ba? Parang kahit walang mag-motivate sa kanila kasi nakalagay po dito, uh, it says here, it has no commander, no overseer, or ruler, yet they store. Wala po naglilid sa kanilang pastor. Okay, ito na si pastor lang gam natin. Ililid tayo para ma-encourage tayo. Nandito na si boss pastor natin uh, or si boss na, na ililid tayo para encourage tayo at ma-motivate tayo na mag-invest. Wala silang ganun. They have no rulers. They have no pastors. They have no commanders. Yet, they store. So look at the characteristics. So it's provisions in summer and gathers its food at Harvest. That's why, during the rainy season, marami silang kinakain at bundat na bundat sila kasi totoo yung kasabihan, kapag may sinuksok, may mahuhugot. And the last uh, characteristics of an ant is they invest. And they say, and by the way, this message will talk and will run about investment and saving. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, bili ka ng alkansya after this message. Amen. Proverbs 21.20 In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but the foolish man devours all he has. Yun daw mga mat- mat- matatalinong tao, ang ginagawa po nila, kapag nareceive na nila yung salary nila, nareceive na nila yung kanilang bound from their parents or from their company, ang ginagawa po nila is they save. Pero yung mga mangmang na tao, tignan mo yung katabi mo, hindi ikaw ito, sabihin mo, yung kakilala mo lang, <coughs> okay, they devour all he has. Yung nanginginig na paghawak na yung pera, guys, san tayo? Akong bahala. Diba? So, one day millionaire. Amen! <laughs> That's why I want to bring you in this subject. Our message title for today is The Peso Starts here. The peso starts here. Now, I want to ask you this question. If you will be asked, what are you going to save for? Kung meron kang pera ngayon, for example, at team, you have 1 million. Oh, di ba? Bigyan mo naman ako, di ba? Tights ka 10%. Bigyan naman si pastor, di ba? For example, may 1 million ka. What, what were you going to save up? 
Of course, may mga kasabihan yung mga... Yan yung si Ma'am Shella. Yan yung si Ma'am Shella. Tapos ngayon kamay. Si Ma'am Shella, financial advisor ito. Uso sa kanila, of course, yung mga tinatawag na insurance. At from the insurance, you have to pay monthly. May mga juice ka doon. So after 10 years, ewan ko kung ano yung policy nila, after 10 years, you will gain kung ano yung sinuksok mo. Pero sa, sa, sa mga, one of the advices ng mga financial advisors is you have to put aside or set aside yung tinatawag nating emergency funds. Emergency funds, ito po yung mabubuhay ka ng six months or three to six months even though you are not working anymore. During pandemic, for sure, our parents had their own emergency funds. Kasi nag-stop lahat, walang clinic noon, pero nabuhay sila for 3 to 6 months until nag-open na at nawala na yung lockdown, nabuhay sila kasi meron silang tinatawag na emergency funds. Now, I want to ask you this. Ang emergency funds ba natin ay yung, alam, magtatabi ako, magsaset ako ng emergency fund ko kasi baka next year may bago lumabas na iPhone 16. Is that our emergency fund? And I, I tell you, magkaiba po ang emergency fund at saka mga wants. Amen. Also, yung pangpariban natin, natin Carla. So, <laughs> patibay ko yung bida dito. Alright? So, hindi considered na emergency fund yung pangpariban. Can you imagine this? We, we major the minor. Di ba? So, para Allah, pastor na yung stress na ako. Bakit? Wala kasi akong pang iPhone next year. Eh. Baka lumabas na. Alam mo yun, hindi na ako maging in or whatever. And second one is not just emergency funds. Uh, how's our purchases? Or maybe our future. Pastor, I'm saving up my future. Kasi po, uh, naniniwala ko uh, sa future ko, uh, kailangan ko magpa-brace. Kailangan ko po yun. Amen. So, Doc, bigyan mo. <laughs> Kasama ba yun? Hindi kita pinariringgad, bro, ha? Bagong gracious ka. Grabe ka naman, programmer. So, but, but, but those are not for the future. Our future is all, is all about our somehow medication or maybe our pag-aaral po. Yung po yung mga for the future. Now, I want to I wanna, I wanna raise this question. Why save and invest? Kasi baka sabihin ninyo, Pakana lang nila pro life nila Ma'am Shella yan para kumita si Ma'am Shella. Or pakana lang po ng ano yan ng mga <coughs> ng mga banko yan para po kumita sila. But you know, we're going to look at the biblical perspective of why we should invest and why we should save. Number 1 is that we need to be good stewards of God's blessings. Amen. Amen. Kasi po one of the main ways God provides for us is through money. Lahat po ng ginagalawa natin kailangan ng pera. At most of the time, ang Panginoon po, ipinadadala po niyang kanyang provision through money. Sa inyong, sa inyong, sa inyong, sa inyong mga kumpanya, sa inyong mga magulang, or sa inyong mga kakilara, whatever. And we are accountable to God how we use everything He gives us in life. And one of those is money. Including money. And next one, of course, we have to be good stewards. And don't forget that we invest, but don't trust money over God. Here's the thing. Good po yung nag invest tayo. I have investment. I have bank accounts. Praise God, natuto ako, tinuruan ako ng mga magulang ko, kami ni, jo, ni, ni, ni Doc Josh, sabi ng nanay ko, Jomel, uh, isa sa mga, mga golden na advice na, na narinig ko sa aking nanay. Jomel, kapag nilagay mo na sa bangko ang pera mo, isipin mo na parang wala kang pera. Para hindi ka magre-rely na mayroon akong bank accounts, uh, magre-rely na lang ako nun, pambili ko ng sapatos ko. So, no, I don't do that. Kapag nasa bangko na, iniisip ko, wala na akong pera, pag ginastos ko yon, papano ako mabuboy someday. Now, that, 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 those are good ideas. But remember, we are investing, but don't forget to trust God at hindi ang ating pera. Kasi, you know, of course, we are, we, there are plenty of wrong motives for saving money. If we're saving money out of fear of the future, it shows that we're not trusting God. Baka kasi, kailangan ko mag-save kasi baka makawawa ko in the future. We're not trusting God anymore. 
So, parang nagtatrust na tayo sa bank account natin, sa trust fund natin, rather than God. But I believe, sabi dito sa Luke chapter 20, 12, verse 7, Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Alam ng Panginoon yung kung sino ka at alam ng Panginoon yung pangangailangan natin. Amen. And don't be afraid, the Bible said, you are worth more than many bilip in Tagalog. You are worth more than many sparrows. So why afraid and worry about tomorrow if you know that your God will supply all your needs according to His glory and riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. Kaya sa atin po dito, sometimes don't look at your bank accounts and say, hey, my identity ay nasa bank account ko. No, your identity is in Christ. If you have the blesser, you have the blessing. Don't rely and don't see the blessing because blessing will vanish someday, but your blesser will remain and bless you forever. Amen. So, 1 Timothy 6.10, the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money and have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And I want to tell you this, miserliness. Ibig sabihin po na miserliness, stinginess, is actually a sin. Minsan, natatakot na tayo maglabas at magpaluwal ng pera. Bakit? Kasi natatakot tayo na baka maubos natin tayo someday and we're not trusting God anymore. Remember, ang Panginoon po ay hindi nagkukulang. <coughs> and of course, it's foolish and arrogant to make money our security. Now, Pastor, how should I prioritize our pesos? Because I believe every peso counts. Amen? Alright, I have here, mabilis lang, tithe. How many of you here, you're giving your tithe? Tithe ay hindi po ito panganan ng mga pastor. This is what the Bible says. And we believe that tithe is supposed to be in the storehouse as the Malachi 3.10 says. Amen? So, we give, actually, we're not giving to God. We are returning the blessings we have received from the Lord. And next one is, you have to trim minimal living expenses. And that later on, we're going to talk about that. And of course, we have to tackle paying off debt. Sino dito ang mahilig umutang? Okay, please, tigilan na po natin ang, sabi mo sa katabi mo, wag ka nang uutang ng marami. <laughs> Konti lang, hiwiro lang. So, <laughs> paying off debt. And of course, you have to thrive through investment. How many of you here, you're investing already? You're investing with your knowledge? You're investing intellectually? You're investing spiritually? Or you're investing materially? Now, um, I have here uh, rules of savings and investing. Are you ready for this? All right, so uh, rules of saving and investing. Number one, na rule natin ngayon as we talk about this message, Pastor starts here. Number one is this don't invest in things you don't understand. Don't invest in things you don't understand. You know, kung tatanungin niyo po ako, for sure, some of us here, we don't like to invest and we don't want to save. Why? There are factors. Maybe takot po tayo, maybe we're doubting, or maybe we heard the past news. Pastor, uh, kasi nung narinig ko nung nakaraan, na, natatakot ako mag-invest sa lupa namin. Bakit? Kasi ang daming kinain ng peste. Ang daming nalugi sa sibuyas. Eh, look at now, ang mahal ng sibuyas. For sure, yung mga nag- patuloy at mga nag-invest at naiintindihan nila someday I know our work is not in vain kikita rin kami sila yung milyonaryo ngayon the reason we're not investing because somehow first is we are we are afraid second one is we are in doubt and of course we don't understand it that's why I encourage don't invest isang bagay na hindi mo talaga naiintindihan meron mga nauso na Ano yung tinatawag na yung, yung game? Tapos kay Axi. So, nag-invest sila doon. Hindi naman nila alam yung kalakara. Ano nangyari? Bumaba ng bumaba. And then, most of you, because I did not invest, most of us, nalugi kasi hindi naman talaga alam yung kalakaran. 
Unang-una, sino talaga may ari nun? Meron bang, meron bang insurance yun kapag naubos or nawala or whatever? So, don't invest sa isang bagay na hindi natin naiintindihan. Proverbs 24, 3, 4. By wisdom, a house is built, and through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. Alam nyo, I want you to underline this, through understanding. Because really, understanding is maturity. Yung mga tao na iintindihan talaga yung isang bagay, it takes maturity. Yung mga mature, yun yung mga nakakaintindi. Diba, sasabihin ko sa'yo, Glenn, Glenn, ganito ang gawin natin. Kapag naintindihan mo, ibig sabihin, you're mature. But somehow, the reason we're not, we're not growing sa buhay natin, we don't understand what we're doing. I will invest, for sure, naintindihan mo kung paano ang kalakaran dyan sa coffee shop mo, the bog, and you invest kasama ng buong pamilya mo, and right now, you're earning because you understood what coffee shop is. Kung paano pinapaikot yun. And it applies not just in business, but also in spiritual and eternal things. Amen? Parang ang hirap mag-invest sa storehouse o sa Panginoon o sa disciple mo kapag hindi mo naiintindihan yung investment ko sa isang bagay. Tama? Bakit ako magdi-disciple? Eh, gastos lang yan. No. Hindi mo naiintindihan talaga yung great commission ng Panginoon kaya you're not investing or you're getting the point. So, the reason you are giving, I believe, dito sa, sa church, sa storehouse, or maybe sa, sa nag invest po tayo sa discipleship group natin because we really understood, if I'll invest to this person, he will be a future leader of this generation and he's going to raise another set of leaders someday, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, and that is my investment and I understand it. And, Maganda sa atin dito, maintindihan po natin kung anong ibig sabihin ng... Because investment is not just in material things. In emotions, in... in, 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 in uh, kaya nga, di ba, bakit ka nag, nakikipag-date? Kahapon, aniver- palapakan naman natin si Kuya Gerald at saka si Ate Carla. They celebrated their anniversary. Di ba? Ngayon, 366 days na sila. They just surpassed the, the one year each. Never know. Alright. So, <laughs> for example, si Ate Carla, for example, ang dami yung mga investments. Hindi lang sa pera, for sure. You invested your time, your effort. And the, the reason they're happy today with God's love and of course, the Lord na nasa center, nasa gitna ng inyong relasyon because you invested not just in materially. Niregaluan mo na ba siya ng uh, laptop? Praise God, hindi pa. Pero soon, di ba, lalaririgaluan mo siya. You invested materially kay Gerald, uh, same as Kuya Gerald, pero ang magandang investment na ginawa ninyo na nakita ko, Ate Carla and Kuya Gerald, is you invested your time spiritually the reason you're happy today. Because Jesus is in the center of your relationship. So we see that re- uh, investment is not just materially, but also emotionally and spiritually. Amen. Now, sometimes the best investments are the ones you don't make. Anong ibig sabihin doon? Minsan yung mga bagay na pinag-i-investan natin yung mga bagay na hindi natin hindi invest. Nag-guess ba yun? Import na yun. Now, bakit ko nasabi yun? Because there are two ways to make money. Number one is people making money. Kumikita tayo at nag invest tayo at nag-earn tayo ng money at we gain wealth through people making money. Anong ibig sabihin nito? For example, ako ay nag-work sa isang office dahil nag-work ako through my service, I'm gaining salary. Gets? So, for example, nagtatrabaho sa opisina, si Ate Angie ngayon sa isang kumpanya and you are people making money. So, because of your service, because of your knowledge na in-invest ng mga magulang mo sa'yo, ngayon kumikita ka na. Do you get that? And then, ah, uh, uh, hindi lang yun. People making money uh, through our service, through job, through salary. And also, if you want to make money, you have to marry a guy with potential job. Di ba? Kung hindi ka nagtatrabaho ngayon, pakasalan mo yung isang tao na potential na magtatrabaho at magkakaroon ng job. O di ba? Ang dali. Di ba? Sabi mo nga sakta yung may work ka ba? Pwede ka na. Di ba? Pwede ka na. So, 
O kaya ito, mas madali ito. Ito, uso ngayon ito, yung 3M. Alam niyo yung 3M? Magpakasal ka sa isang matandang mayaman na madaling mamatay. Yun ang tinatawag na people making money. Tignan mo yung katabi mo. May kilala ka ba? Beto mo naman ako. Okay? Malay mo, next year, sa'yo na lahat ng mana. Di ba? Parang masaya yun, Glenn. Bigyan mo ako. <laughs> uh, the Bible said, sec- that's biblical. Huwag kang mag-aasawa nang walang trabaho. So, baka kala nyo, gawa-gawa ko lang eh. Sabi dito, 2 Thessalonians 3.10, If a man will not work, he shall not eat. Huwag pakainin ang tamad. That's why, the opening verse we, we read, Hey, go to ants, you sluggard. You tamad. You lazy. Because, uh, yung mga taong hindi nagtatrabaho, wag daw pakainin. Tama naman. That's biblical. And the next one is, two ways to make money. Number one, people making money. And then number two, money making money. Ang ganda nito. Let your money be doubled itself and work for you. Ito na yung mga investment. For example, uh, nag invest kayo, I don't know if I consider stocks as investment. Eh. Kasi parang, alam nyo yan, bumababa siya or whatever, pwede kang matalo. No? Uh, I don't know if that considered as investment. Pero one of the best um, investment of money, making money or picture is y- you buy a lot. Yung, 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 remember the story of Job? Lahat kinuha sa kanya, except yung kanyang real estate. Dahil itong natutunan ko sa magulang natin, Josh, eh, sabi ni Daddy, ang tao dumarami, pero ang lupa hindi dumarami. That's why ang lupa ay tumataas habang tumatagal. Amen? That's why uh, sa family po namin, one of the investments is really lot. Ang galing nila. Eh. Nakakabilib eh. At uh, nakaka, nakakabless kasi si Utol, I'm so proud. Sabi ko nga sa kanya, dapat siya nag-speak dito eh. Uh, he, he invested, baka gusto niya mag-rent ng, ng apartment, kausapin niyo siya. He invested apartment. Okay? Sabi ko sa kanya, bigyan mo na lang ako. Alright? <laughs> Kasi ako, uh, magpo-focus ako sa church. But really, uh, someday, we have to invest something na nagdodobo ng hindi tayo nagtatrabaho. Right? So sabi dito sa Matthew chapter 25, verse 16, The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. Remember this parable? <coughs> yung, yung master nila, uh, binigyan sila ng talents five and then two, and then one. Yung five ang ginawa niya, in-invest niya, at nadoble, naging sampo. And then yung dalawa, in-invest niya, naging apat. And then yung isa, sabi niya, nakakatakot kasi itong master namin eh. You're a hard man, kaya ang ginawa ko, binaon ko na lang po, at least hindi po ako nalugi, hindi rin po ako kumita. Siya na yan. Ang nangyari, nagalit yung kanilang master. At sabi niya, hey, dahil ikaw ay wicked, dahil ikaw ay tamad, Anong ginawa? Binigay yung isa doon sa pinakamarami. Naging 11. Look at that. We see the ability. God gave us the ability to gain wealth and we have to use the wisdom we receive from the Lord through His Word, through His power, so that we will gain wealth. Hindi masamang umaman. Hindi masamang mag-dream po tayo na umaman tayo someday, I want to buy all those stuff na gusto ko, pinapangaram ko. Those are good. But of course, we have to check our intentions. Yun yung sinasabi ng 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. But we see here that uh, God rewards faithfulness. Ask yourself, am I faithful sa blessings ng Panginoon na natatanggap ko sa Kanya every day? So that's number one. That's number one rule. Don't invest to the things you don't really understand. And then number two is this. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Let me explain that by reading Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2. <coughs> Give portions to seven, yes to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So the author of this 
book is King Solomon. He's rich, he's famous, sobrang yaman, uh, sobrang daming ari-arian, at uh, nakaka, nakaka tuwa dito, even him, he understands what investments look like. So sabi niya dito, kapag meron kang pera or meron kang puhunan, huwag mong ilalagay daw sa isang business. Ihiwalay mo. Those are, that, that is biblical. For example, sa, sa agriculture, meron kang isang sakong seed. Hindi mo daw ito dapat ilagay sa isang field lang. Dapat ilagay mo sa iba't ibang field kasi hindi natin alam, baka dito sa koral, bumagyo at mapeste lahat ng mga tinanim mo. Pero pwede ka maglagay kung saan man. For example, sa Nueva Ecija, meron din kaming lupa doon. Sabi ni Ate Carla, ahatiin ko yung aking uh, mga seeds. Itatanim ko sa Nueva Ecija yung, yung half, of my, half of the sack ng seed namin and then sa koral yung iba or sa patalan. We see there na maganda meron tayong foresight Ah, uh, baka medyo malugi to or yung calculated risk na tinatawag do. Di ba? So, somehow, baka biglang umulan dito. Of course, I have faith sa Panginoon. But of course, hindi natin mapipigilan ito. Hindi natin alam kung yung weather someday. Hindi natin alam kung ano yung, 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 yung magiging uh, outcome nito someday. But you have to split it. And that is, I think, that is wisdom. Amen? Kaya nga, ako, pastor, uh, Really, I invest to many. Kaya nga, I send, I miss you to many. No? Iba yon, Glenn, alright? So, uh, iba po yun, alright? Ibang investment yon. Sa part na yon dapat isa lang. At dapat sure ka at pinag-pray mo talaga. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, amen. amen. Baka kasi yung send, send to many, yung I miss you. Alright. <laughs> Now, here's the thing. Um, one of the best example is Doc Josh. Huwag na tayong lumayo. Meron tayo dito mga businessmen. Sila Doc Josh. Si Doc Josh ay isang uh, dentista. So, kumikis, kumikita siya through his service. Pag nagpabunot kayo, ah, by the way, may buy one, take one ngayon? Sa harapan. Okay, pag yung binunot, okay. Punta kayo sa, kay Doc Josh, uh, the best dentist in the world. Okay, as of the moment. <laughs> Alright, uh, si Doc Josh, kumikita siya at mayaman si Doc, di ba? Praise God, mayaman si Doc, di ba? Yes. Proud ako, kapatid ko yan eh, di ba? So, si Doc Josh, kumikita siya through his service sa pagbubunot, sa pagbubrish, okay? So, sa brashers, sa mga root canal, di ko alam mo, yung mga sipilyo, yung mga binibenta niya, through his service. Pero si Doc Josh, uh, he, nagkaroon siya ng vision, hindi ako forever malakas eh. Someday, baka pag 70 years old na ako, hindi ko na kaya magbunot. Uugod-ugod na ako. Kaya, naisip niya, naisip namin bilang pamilya, we have to invest doon sa passive income. Ang tawag sa ginagawa ni Doc ngayon is active income. I gain money, I earn money through my service and that is active because I'm actively participating and doing and, and, and showing my service to people. That is active. Pero ang passive income is this, nakaupo ka lang, pakipikapi ka lang, patingin-tingin ka lang, pero kumikita ka. So, ang ginawa ng family is, hindi kami, ma, ma, di, di tayo mani, ma, mananatili sa service kasi hindi tayo forever malakas, Glenn. Someday, hindi mo na kayang, hindi mo na kayang magtimpla ng kape, mag-hire ka na na magtitimpla ng kape and that is active income. Or passive income. So, what The, the, what our family did is, hey, soon, di tayo pabata, patanda tayo, let's do a passive income. Also, in community support. Dito po sa church natin ang maganda, hindi lang po tayo nag invest sa next generation. nag invest po tayo also sa now generation. Kasi kung mag invest tayo sa next generation lang, pag nag invest po tayo sa next generation, puro palabas. Di ba po? We appreciate uh, our, our, our giving na kahit puro barya, we're giving. Amen? Palakpakan natin ng Panginoon. But here's the thing. Kung babaliwalain natin yung mga matatandamil, sabihin natin, hindi, mag-focus lang tayo sa mga bata. Walang magsusupport sa mga bata. 
So dito po sa church natin, in all ages, di ba po, at testimony yung nanay ko dyan na nasa ano, supporter ko yan, sponsor talaga yan. So talagang, we in, they invest sa next generation. At sila Bishop Zaldi ay nag invest sa now generation, which is ang mga youth nag invest din sa now generation. Through what? Through our strength. Mas malakas na si Danny kaysa kay Papa mo. Hindi, parehas siya mas malakas sa inyo. Uh, siya pa rin. Uh, kunwari tumanda na si Papa mo. Pinahiya mo naman ako eh. <laughs> no, kunwari siya mas malakas. Uh, for example, si Papa mo ganito. Uh, 80 years old na siya. Ikaw, uh, hindi ka tumatanda, immortal ka, baka empire ka eh, di ba? <laughs> 23 years old. For example, 23 years old. Tapos yung mga matatanda natin sa sa Bethany Worship Experience, hindi na kaya magbuhat ng mga kung ano man. Doon natin sila natutulungan. Yes. ba? So, makikita natin dito, we invest our strength to them. And by the way, ang mga youth na po ang serve sa ating Bethany Worship Experience. So, help us. ba po? Sila po kasi, nag to support sila sa campus para magpatuloy yung mission natin, abutin yung mga campuses, and also to raise yung mga leaders natin. ba? So, pag nakita nyo po sila, Bishop Zaldi, yung mga matatanda sa be- advance in years, sorry, advance in years, yung mga nakakatanda sa church natin, batiin nyo po sila. Mag-thank you po kayo. Magmano po tayo. Dito po sa Bethany, nauso po yung pagmamano because we give homage, we pay homage sa mga nakakatanda kasi kung wala po sila, wala tayo. Kung wala si Zaldi at saka si Eureka, walang Jomel at Joshua. Amen? So, community support. Kaya po sa, sa deep and wide, ay meron tayong kids, may preteens po, meron pong juniors, meron pong uh, pre-university family, meron pong collegiate at meron pong YA. So, iba-iba pong family, iba-ibang pamilya. And we believe, kapag nag-invest tayo dito, someday, sila rin mag invest sa next generation. Amen? Next one is personal development. Kapag graduate ka, di ba? Of course, nag- nag-invest yung magulang mo or yung sarili mo, in-investan mo sa pag-graduate mo ngayon, nag-self-support ka, that's good. Pero of course, hindi ka magre rely lang sa pagiging graduate student mo ng pagiging civil engineer. You have to take the boards. Another, yun yung pang eight mo. Okay, graduate na ako sa civil engineering. I have to take the boards. That's your eight portion. And then of course, after the eight portion mo, meron na naman bago. You have to take your masteral degree. So makikita natin dito, hindi lang tayo nag invest sa isang bagay. So, we are spreading those investment para tayo po ay mas lumago. And next one, of course, sa ating ministry. Sa ministry po natin, meron tayong tinatawag na outreach program at meron po tayong tinatawag na enrich program. Ang enrich program po is we develop leaders inside the church. Amen? So that they will go outside for outreach. Kasi kung puro tayo outreach at puro tayo campus, ano mangyayari? Wala tayong mare-raise na leader dito. At kung puro naman tayo in reach, wala tayong maabot ng mga future leaders ng generation natin. That's why we are sending the eight portion, yung seed natin, hindi lang dito sa loob, kundi sa labas. Are you getting it? Yeah. Are you still there? Yeah. Amen. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Number three, don't try to get rich quick. Sino dito gustong yumaman? Pero nagmamadali. Alam nyo po, uh, naintindihan ko kasi ako nung pagka-graduate, gusto ko talaga yumaman eh. Talagang, paano kaya ako yayaman? Uh, I have this idea, mag-abroad ako. Uh, buti hindi natuloy. Mag-London ako. Kasi ang kita daw noon, 120,000 pesos monthly. Tapos, all expense paid, yung board and lodging mo, neto-neto yung 120. Praise God, hindi natuloy. Bakit? Pwede naman pala akong i-bless ni Lord sa Pilipinas at nakakapag-serve pa ako. Bakit? Ang Diyos ba ay taga-London lang? Wala ba sa Pilipinas si Lord? Wala ba sa Pilipinas sa, 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 sa paniki? God is everywhere. God can bless you everywhere. 
Amen? So don't try to get rich quick. And, and, and going to abroad is not the answer to all your problems. Sabi dito sa 1 Timothy 6, 9, people who want to get rich, look at this, fall into temptation and a trap. Ganda nung preaching kanina ni Bishop. Dati, nung hindi ka pamayaman, anong sinasabi natin? Makikinig po ko, lahat po ng gusto nyo, gagawin ko po, susundin ko po, Lord. Eh ngayon, dahil nagnanais ka and your motivation is wrong, at gayon yung maman kana, you were trapped and you were ensnared. And, and sabi dito, into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and dis- destruction. Look at this. Hindi lahat na nag abroad yes, yung maman. Pero hindi lahat na nag abroad ay na fulfill yung will ng Panginoon sa buhay nila. Hindi po masamang mangarap, but we have to check our motives and our intentions. Sometimes our big dreams lead us to greediness. Diba? Minsan parang meron ka na nga. Di, gusto ko pa eh, lahat eh. Ang gagawin natin, easy money ang ginagawa natin. Because of greediness, we are committing sin. And I want to tell you this sometimes, the fastest way to double your money, to double your money is, diba kasi parang may pera na tayo. Turuan ko kayo para i-doble niyo yung pera ninyo. You have your money. Sometimes, the fastest way to double your money is to fold it. Double na. Lagay mo sa per, ano mo, and then be content. The Bible said, Proverbs 13, 11, He who gathers money, little by little, makes it grow. Meron kasi kapapasok lang sa work. Gusto kagad mayaman agad. Meron po bang ganon? Pastor, natanggap ako sa tarel ko. Mayaman na ako agad. Wala pong ganon. One time I asked my dad, Dad, kailan kayo nakaluwag-luwag? Kasi bilib na bilib ako sa kanila when it comes to financial uh, stability, eh. papaano sila maghawak ng pere. I asked my dad tsaka si mami, kailan po kayo nakaluwag-luwag? Kasi bilib na bilib ako sa kanila. Pag yung mumol kami, tagaturo lang kami ni Josh eh. Silang tagabayad, di ba? <laughs> ito, ito, tugso namin ito. Bilib na bilib kami kung papaano sila maghawak ng pera. But I asked my dad, Dad, kailan po kayo nakaluwag-luwag? He said to me, um, medyo nakaluwag tayo, na 40 years old ako. Pero 13 years na silang mag-asawa at pamilya kami 40 years old pa lang sila nakaluwag. Pero ibig sabihin, unti-unti, nagigain yung experience at nagigain yung investment at yung pera. So, wala pa lang mayaman agad. So, ikaw ngayon, nagbe-business ka ngayon, kapiteyo. Di ba? Kasi, for sure, yung kapiteyo na yan, yung kapiteyo po natin, lahat po ng proceeds niyan ay ginagamit for campus, for ministry, at sa, sa wala pong napupunta kay Danny. Okay? Wala pong napupunta kay Doc or kung kanino man. Napupunta po yan sa mission. Wala pong may-ari ng kapiteyo. We believe, Danny, minsan nagtataka tayo, ba't wala tayong kinikita, Pastor? Minsan deficit pa tayo. Sabi sa Bible, unti-unti. Okay, magmadali. Sooner or later, malay mo mag-branch out ka na. Uh, tatawagan mo yung mga empleyado mo. Kumusta ang ating franchise dyan sa Paris? Uh, Paris Apulid, di ba? Kasi merong Paris Apulid. <laughs> Here's the thing. Remember this, Proverbs 13, 11, He who gathers money, little by little, makes it grow. Lahat ng maliit, lumalaki. Ang nakapagkakatiwalaan sa maliit ay lumalaki. Meron kasi kapapasok lang sa work. Anong iniisip? Loan ang iniisip. Meron naman kaka-work mo pa lang. Kinukompute na agad ng pamilya mo yung kinikita mo. Kaching, kaching, kaching. Or maybe you say students, kakukuha pa lang ng baon, diretso agad ng bog. Di ko naman sinisiraan si bog, no? Mag-save muna tayo. Masaya yung masaya tayo, pero of course, don't forget, hey, I have to save up. And here is the formula of wealth. Are you ready for this? The formula of wealth is the simple money, God's provision plus time plus consistency equals wealth. 
I believe yung mga magulang natin ay blines ng Panginoon. Bakit? Sila ay patient with their time at sila ay consistent sa ginagawa nila. So yung money plus time plus consistency equals wealth. Kapag wala yung isang formula dyan, we will never gain wealth. Kung walang provision ng Panginoon, puro ka time at puro consistency, wala. <laughs> Kung puro ka, man, mabiyaya ang Panginoon sa'yo, pero wala kang time to improve your skill, yung, 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 yung ability na binigay sa'yo yung Panginoon, hindi mo ginagamit sa tama, and you're consistently being lazy, you're not gaining wealth. Or maybe you have God's money, you have time, but you're not consistent, then you will never gain wealth. Now, I made a computation. Are you ready for this? Para makuha natin. I made a computation on savings and investment. Uh, two groups of people, estudyante at saka yung mga working. Taas ngayon kamay ng mga estudyante. Taas kamay. Uy, palakpakan naman natin mga students natin. <coughs> so, for example, for, for, for students 13 years old to 23 years old, ito yung mga, mga nag-aaral po eh. Okay. So, for example, ito yung computation natin, ang daily savings mo ay 20 pesos. 20 lang. Huwag ka na mag-100 or 50. Reality, check. 20 pesos, let's say. 20 pesos ang daily savings mo. Ngayon, sa monthly savings mo, meron kang 20 pesos, okay, per day, times mo ito sa numbers of days in a month. And then yearly savings, 20 pesos a day times number of, of, of days in a year. And then makikita natin mamaya, savings over 10 years, yearly investment times 10. Okay. Ito na yung magiging savings mo. Savings in 10 years. Kasi mag-aaral po tayo for 10 years eh. From uh, sabi na natin 10 years, meron kang bangon ng 13 years old, ng 23 ka. Okay? Let's say, malamala. Daily savings is 20 pesos. Pakita mo? Okay. Kaya, students, taas kamay. Kaya, payat. <laughs> Di ba? Okay, ang monthly savings natin kapag 20 pesos a day tayo is this. You will have 600 pesos per month. Alright. Now, ang yearly savings mo pala, you will have 7,300 pesos per year. Malaki na rin. O ngayon, ang over 10 years savings mo, you will have accumulated what? Pakita mo dyan, 73,000 pesos in 10 years. <coughs> ngayon, after natin mag-aral, ano mangyayari? During your job hunting, hindi ka nahihingi ng pera sa mga magulang mo. Di ba? pang pa NBI mo, pang pa clearance mo, pang pa NSO mo, meron pa ba doon? PSA mo, <laughs> or whatever, or pang pa drug test mo, di ba? Para sure ball. <laughs> Hindi ka nahihingi. May, or may capital ka na for future business. Sila atitin, may mga business yung mga yan, for sure, inipon nila yon. Oh now, sa mga working, tasang kami ng mga working? Okay. Working tayo. For example, minimum wage natin, 15,000. And you will save 20% of your minimum wage salary. Or minimum wage or salary. A monthly savings natin, 20% ng 15,000 pesos. Yearly savings, times 12 months in a year. So, savings natin over 5 years, or yearly savings times 5 years. O ito yung magiging savings natin in 5 years. So, monthly savings is you will save... 3,000 pesos monthly. Are you following me? Yeah. Ang magiging yearly savings mo, you will save up how much? 36,000 pesos per year. Malaki hindi? Pwede na. Pwede. Diba? Pero 5 years ng computation natin, masyado matagal yung, yung 10 years. Over 5 years savings, you will save a total of 180,000 pesos in 5 years. Ngayon, so after 5 years, may puhunan ka na for business. At itong maganda, after 5 years na nag-work ka, may puhunan ka ng pampakasal. So hindi ka na lang basta kay mayor magpapakasal. 
Pwede mo lang kunin si Bishop Saldi. Di ba? Teen, after five years, matagal na yun. Di ba? Nick, hindi sir na. Di ba? Bago mataas na. Oh, meron lang, meron lang. Baka, baka makasubo sila. Pero makikita natin dito, when we're saving at least 20% working people, hindi na tayo ihingi sa mga magulang. Pakasal. Ihingi ka pang pakasal mo, nakakaya naman yun. Di ba? O kaya, gusto mong grande na, yung grande, gusto ko pastor sa garden wedding or church wedding or maybe underwater <laughs> wedding. Pero ang pera mo magkano? 3,000. Paano naman yun? Abonado pa si Bishop. Di ba? Abonado pa yung mga magulang mo. But when we are saving at least 20%, guys, hindi naman malaki yung 20%, eh. 3,000 lang a year, you will save up in five years for 180,000 pesos. Eh kapag nag-loan ka, ito mga natrabaho sa gobyerno, no? mahilig mag-loan. Eh pag nag-loan ka, magkano ang interest? At least 2.5%. Baon ka na sa utang, binabayaran mo pa yung interest. Huwag ugaliing mangutang. So may character development, kaso paurong, di ba? Remember this, it's easy to fall into debt, but hard to get out of it. Madaling mangutang, pero mahirap magbayad. At marami pong nag-aaway ng dahil sa utang. Yes. Dating magkaibigan, ngayon, magkaaway na. Nagpaparinigan sa Facebook. Dating magkasintahan, ngayon, magkakilala na lang. Bakit? Sige na, baby, bibili ang shoes. Promise, mabayaran ko. Next month, next month. Pero hindi binayaran. Pinag-awayan ng pera. Daling umutang, pero hirap magbayad. That's why, number four, invest more than you spend. Invest more than you spend. Alam nyo guys, hindi naman tayo utang kung wala tayong gustong bayaran eh. Tama na ba at time na ba na magpatayo ka ng bahay mo? Kung hindi pa kaya, pag-isipan mabuti. ba? So kung hindi pa masyadong, hindi, magpo-provide si Lord. Yes, magpo-provide si Lord. Pero somehow, God is teaching us to, you know, to manage those little things. Unless life and death and situation, dito pwede natin ipangutang siguro, ba? Kung mamamatay na, kailangan ng paggamot, kailangan talaga. Pero iPhone, ipang-uutang? I don't think so. Where do we invest our money? Because what you do with what you have reveals what you believe. Kung ano meron ka at kung ano yun ang nilalabas mo, yun ang pinaniniwalaan mo. Si ang Panginoon, He invested sa tao kasi naniniwala siya sa tao that the, the, the people will be the church. At yung hanggang ngayon, yung investment ni Jesus ay buhay na buhay. Amen? Paul became a tent maker. He became self-sufficient worker to provide for his ministry. So, if you have money, make disciples. Make money, make disciples. That's the best investment. Amen? Uh, now, as we end this uh, message, applications of two things. Number five is think like a steward, not an owner. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, hindi ikaw ang may-ari niyan. Pag may-ari ng Panginoon yan, kay ingatan mo. Think like a steward, not an owner. Kaya ang ganda ng message title natin eh, manager. We are not the owners, we are just managers of God's blessing. Psalm 24.1, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world, and all who live in it. Ibig sabihin po nito, ang lahat ng nakikita at hawak natin ay galing at sa Panginoon. We are just God's managers. We are not the owner. Now, I want to illustrate. Uh, pwede, Glenn, hindi ka dito. Bigyan ko kayo ng illustration, practical illustration. Para ma-prove sa inyo at maintindihan natin na ang pera at lahat ng blessing na natatanggap natin, lahat ng nakikita natin ay galing sa Panginoon. For example, Glenn, kumita ka ng thousand-thousand. Right? 
Tumi- kumita ka ng thousand-thousand. Of course. Ngayon, gusto ko yung tanungin. Magkano ang kay Lord dito sa kinita niya? 10%. Parang tama, pero mali. Ang tendency natin, of course, uh, our, uh, ang gagawin natin is kapag kumita ako, tatanggalin ko agad yung 10% to bring to storehouse. But in reality, look at this, lahat ng pera mo bro ay sa Panginoon. Ang hinihingi lang ng Panginoon, ang dadalin mo lang sa Panginoon is actually yung 10%. Yung 90% sa'yo. Ngayon, gusto kong sabihin sa'yo, ikaw lang ang tagapaghawak niyan, pero pera pa rin ng Panginoon yan. Kapag may revelations ang Panginoon, nasasabihin niya, bro, give it to someone, to somebody, or to the church, sa vision or whatever. Wala tayong magagawa doon kasi pera pa rin ng Panginoon yun. All that we have are God's money. In fact, lahat ng inahawakan natin, your gadgets, your material things, all these things are God's. Nasabihin natin, di ba, sa ako 90%, binigay ko ng 10% ko, eh, paano pag sinabi ng Panginoon sa'yo, bro, may nangangailangan, tumulong ka. Ano sasabihin mo? Hindi, Lord, ako, pero ko to eh, pero ko na to eh, binigay ko na ako 10%, yung 90 sa akin, no, 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 no. That's not a good attitude. All that we have are God's. Ngayon, kung tutuusin, dahil 90% sa'yo, 10% ng kay Lord, hmm, look at si Lord. Imagine mo, 90 pagkakatiwala sa'yo, 10 lang yung bibigay sa'yo. Kaya ang maganda dito, if God has a revelation sa'yo, Hey son, I, I trust you with that money, use it for the glory of God, uh, you are my manager, use it for the glory of God. So, anak, sige na, bigyan mo ng 50 pesos. 50 lang naman eh. Hindi ah! Nagbigay na akong tights eh. 50 lang kay Lord din, pamasahin niya. Okay. So wala tayong magagawa because all that we have, the Bible said, Psalm 24.1, It is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. In fact, hindi lang yung pera natin, even you ay sa Panginoon. Amen? Amen? Can we clap our hands to God? Thank you so much. Sa'yo na yan. Generous ako. That's why, number six, as I end, live to give and be happy. Live to give and be happy. This is the best investment. At para maintindihan niyo po anong ibig sabihin ng investment at giving, kasi ang Panginoon po, He desires His people to be cheerful full, full, full givers. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, gusto ko malaman ninyo to. Uh, uh, ikaw, Ali, ikaw naman yung bebless ko ngayon. Ali ka dito? Saan yung mga pera ko dito? Saan yung mga pera natin? Ito, Ito na lang, hindi pa nakakat. <laughs> Ito na lang. <laughs> oh. Ano ba naman yan? Banko Central ng Pilipinas, hindi yun yung pakinata. Okay. Gusto ko malaman ninyo ito. May tatlong bagay. The Lord is blessing us. For example, ako si Lord. Kunwari lang. Do Lord din ang pangalan mo. Okay? Ako na si Lord, kunwari. Uh, ako si Lord, ibe-bless kita Lord din. Dahil, hindi dahil mabuti ka, kundi mabuti si Lord. Bine-bless tayo ni Lord, hindi dahil mabait tayo kasi walang mabait. But God is good, I'll bless you. Okay. Gusto ko malaman ninyo, Si Lord, binebless niya tayo. Meron mga points sa buhay natin na kaya tayo binebless ng Panginoon. Dani, tayo ka. Dito ka. Para i-bless mo yung iba. Bigay mo lahat. Bigay mo lahat. Okay. So, ulitin ko. Si Lord, binebless niya tayo kasi it's meant so that you will bless others. Gets? Meron din ng mga blessing ang Panginoon that God is blessing you, Lord, then, to keep it, keep it, and use it for the glory of God. Okay? Pero ang magandang attitude natin dito, tignan nyo to, I'm going to bless you, Lord, then, to keep it and use it for the glory of God. May mga blessing ang Panginoon na it's meant to be given sa ibang tao. 
And there are blessings ang Panginoon that are meant to be kept para gamitin natin for the glory of God. Paano natin gagawitin yon? Lord, I'm using this money for your glory. How? Lord, gagalingan ko mag-aral. Lord, gagamitin ko to to serve you. Lord, uh, bibili ako ng, ng mga gamit. Yes, because I everything we do, I, I do it for your glory. And God is being glorified. Whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it for the glory of God. But the best attitude na pwede natin gawin is this. Lord, then, I bless you because I'm good. Ang magandang attitude natin dito, maganda kahit anong sabihin ng Panginoon. Whether you give it or to keep it, my heart is to give. The reason we're not giving at times, or most of the time, because we think pinaghirapan natin ito at hindi galing sa Panginoon. Diba? Ang magandang attitude natin is we have to live to give. I'm, I'm blessing you because I'm good and your attitude is supposed to be whatever the circumstances are. Bless them or keep it. I will use it for the glory of God and I will give it. Kung anong sinabi ng Panginoon. Amen? Yun ang blessing ng Panginoon. Sige, sa'yo na yan. But in 2 Corinthians, amplified as I end, sabi dito, let each one give Basahin nga natin ito sabay-sabay. Thoughtfully and with purpose. Hindi laging bigay ng bigay. Ang pagbibigay po ay pinag-iisipan din. Amen? At the Bible, and, and the Bible says, Luke 6.38, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it, will be measured back to you. Guys, this verse can be understood not just in material, but also in spiritual sense. Because why? Hindi lang po pera ang bumabalik sa atin. Kundi also forgiveness. But also love. But also peace. If I love you, Josh, you will love me back. If I love you, if I forgive you, Glenn, you will forgive me also. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng verse na to. And the best thing here, itong verse na to, saan natin pinakamagandang gawin nito? Kay Lord. Lord, I know you love me. I will love you! And the good thing here, yung pag-ibig ng Panginoon na hindi nagkukulang. Yung biyaya ng Panginoon hindi nagkukulang. Lord, you bless me! I'll, I'll, I'll bring the 10% to the storehouse because I believe I cannot outgive God. Ang Panginoon ay hindi natin pwedeng talunin sa pagbibigay. That's why as I am, it says here, it's impossible to outgive God. What we have, our strength, our money, came from the Lord. So let's use it for the glory of God because I believe it's impossible to outgive God. If you think that you're, you're, you're strong, God is stronger than you, way stronger than you. If you believe that you are wealthy, our Father is wealthy in heaven. That's why it's impossible to outgive God. So what we have use for the glory of the Lord. Amen. Can you all stand? And why don't we give a uh, clap offering sa ating Panginoon dahil ang Panginoon He is blessing us every day. He is so good in our lives. And right now, why don't we trust God sa buhay natin? Maybe God is asking you, hey, give it to the vision. Give it to someone else. Hey, use it for the glory of God. Use it for me, whatever. Maybe God is revealing something in your life today. And why don't you trust God? Don't fear. The Bible said, don't be afraid because you are more important to what? Say sparrows. God bless you so much. God strengthened you. God gave you wisdom. That's why we have to trust God in every decision we make, in every giving we make, in every life circumstances. Lord, I trust you. That's why right now, Lord, whatever it takes, Ikaw ang aking pagkakatiwalaan. 
That's why, Lord, from now on, I trust you, Lord. That's why I trust you. That's why I trust you. I saw you, Lord. Any earth, any answer. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. That's why I trust him. Come on, I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. I saw the Lord. Any earth, any answer. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the One who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior.
trusting God.